Hello there. Welcome to the learning of engineering tutorials video lectures. In this video lecture, we are discussing about the cantilever beam. The cantilever beam we are widely using for the, the civil applications. In the civil application, we know the beams are widely using are we are specifically designed to carry the transverse load of the a member. It means that when the load is going to be coming perpendicular to the axis of the member, then we can say that's going to be a beam. At the same time here, the cantilever beam are going to be here that graphically represented. So that's going to be here one end is going to be fixed, other end is going to be free. If the configuration of a beam, one end is fixed, other end is free, then we can say that is the cantilever beam. Now, this is going to be the beam. I am going to be giving the notations over here. That is the A and the B. Now, what I am going to do here, once the beam is there, then what is the cross section we are going to be generally assume? Just I have shown the skeleton of that the beam. That cross sections may be in these types we are going to be having. The cross section here, that is going to be the square cross section or circular cross section or L cross section or C cross section or H cross section or I. So any of the cross sections we can take it and we can develop it. Suppose we can take automobile chassis. Most of the time they are using the C cross section. If you take the railway tracks, they are using the I section. Right? If you are going to be taking the beams which are using for the steel materials, then H sections they are going to be using or I sections they are going to be using. Suppose if the material is going to be prepared with the wood, mostly the circular cross sections we are going to be prepared or the rectangle cross section we are taking. Suppose the materials are prepared with the steel, that means the metals. So then widely any of the cross sections are going to be, mainly they are going to be depends on the application we are trying to use the cross section. Most of the time the C cross sections are widely using in the automobile for the moving purpose because it has a high damping factor compared to the other materials. So now what I want to do, I want to find out the shear force and bending moments. These we have to be calculate on the cross section of this member. At any point we are going to be. So we know the length of the beam I am going to be considering here is the L is going to be your length of the beam. So then if I want to find out at any point on the, the shear force or the bending moment, we need to first understand what is the shear force, what is the bending moment. We know the shear force is nothing but the algebraic sum of the transverse forces, the algebraic sum of the transverse forces acting on a beam either to the left side or the right side we are going to be calling as the shear force. The shear force is always trying to shear the, the beam transversely to the axis of the member. Then what is the bending moment? This is also the definition. Algebraic sum of the moments of a transverse forces which are acting at any section of the member either to the right side or the left side we are going to be considering. Suppose what is the right side and the left side of the beam? Suppose I am going to be considering the point C over here. So this is the point C I have considered. Then I can say towards the B side I can say that is the right side and towards the A is going to be I can say the left side of the beam as per my convenience point of view. So then what I want to say the algebraic sum of the forces towards the right side. So then if I am going to be taking this is the reference, I can see how many forces are going to be acting on that beam, right to the right side or the left side. So then we need to find out the, the shear force. So now I am going to be finding the, the shear force at B I am going to be considering. So can you see how many forces we do have at the B? are towards the right side. Just we are going to be omitting this, this side of the left side of from the point B. I am going to be taking only the right side. So from the point B, I can say only the one force is going to be acting. So that I am going to be taking the W is going to be your point load that is in the Newtons. And similarly at the point C, this is going to be the my reference at the moment. So then what I am going to see, I can take the, the algebraic sum of the transverse forces which are acting on a beam that is towards the right side. So can you see how many forces we do have at the right side. So that is the W is going to be acting at B only the one force is there even at the point C. So that's going to be the shear force at C is equal to W into the Newtons. 
Similarly, at the point A, I want to find out the shear force. So what is the shear force here? Can you see algebraic sum of the forces which are acting towards the right side. So can you see how many forces would you have? One force is there. That's going to be W is going to be the Newtons. Now this way we are going to be calculating numerically that is the what is the value or the magnitude of your the shear force at B, at C, at A. It observed that all the values we do have the, the same. When I am going to be say, when I am going to do in the shear forces, the downward direction sign conventions is going to be the positive, upward forces I can consider is the negative. Can you see, with this sign conventions, I can say this, the force is going to be acting at B is positive, at C and at A also positive. Now what I am going to do, I am going to be find out the bending moments on each section of the member. Now again, I am going to be taking, because Compared to A, at B only the magnitude I know. At the B, at A, we don't have that the magnitude forces. So that's why I'm going to be starting from the uh, B. So the here is the the moments at B. We know the bending moment is nothing but the force into the perpendicular distance we have to take it. That is the arm length from your observation point to the line of action of the force. So now what I'm going to do? Force into perpendicular distance we need to have. So here is the all the transverse forces we have we are going to be considering now. So at B is equal to the force is equal to how much here that is the W right and into what is the distance the line of action and your observation points are coinciding. So then the distance is going to be 0 right. So then we are getting the 0 over here. Now I am taking the moments at C is equal to what is the moments here at C can you see the moments already we told the resultant are algebraic sum of the moments of the forces about at any section of the beam either left side or right side we have to be considered. So at the point C how many forces would you have towards the right side? The W is there. So that I am going to be taking the W is your force and what is the distance and I am going to be considering here is going to be the x distance I can for our uh, continuation of the mathematical model. So W into the X I can take it that's going to be W X and similarly I want to find out the moments at A. So this is the moments at A is equal to how many forces would you have towards the right side W and the length is going to be the L we are getting. So this is the magnitude that we are going to be getting the Newton meter here also a Newton meter is the magnitude. So there we can see, we can calculate the point here also and here and here. At any point of the section, we can calculate with the same method. Now we have seen the shear forces as well as the bending moment. Now what I am going to do, I want to draw the shear force diagram over here. So now what I am going to do, I want to draw the, the graphical forces over here. So that what I am going to do, I am going to be drawing over here, I am taking the extension lines through in the downward direction. And similarly, from the point C also, I am going to be taking the extension line. And similarly, at the point B also, I am going to be drawing the extension line. So there we can see, these are the points, the lines are representing some points we have to consider here. So after taking the extension of the each section of this member, now what I am going to do, I am going to be taking the axis of the member. So here it is going to be the axis of this member suppose and which I am using for the a shear force diagram. I am going to be taking the another axis where I can use to find out the bending moment diagram. Now once we have taken the vertical and the horizontal lines, now I am going to be taking the magnitude of the, the shear force. What is the point B? What is the magnitude we do have? So that magnitude is going to be the W. So that I am going to be marking here. The magnitude of this one is going to be the W. Right? At the point C, what is the magnitude of the shear force? That is also we do have that is the W. And similarly, at A also we do have the shear force is going to be the W. So then what I am going to do? I am going to be constructing a line which is I am going to be joining this and these are. So with the help of the scale, I am going to be drawing here some of the lines which are representing the shear forces on each section of the member. So 
that is the magnitude we got at the each section now i am going to be representing with the arrows so which is indicating the shear force of the member which is acting in the uh, downward direction that means it is acting transverse to the member once it is there then i am going to be draw the bending moment diagram as you know the bending moment at b is equal to 0 right and this is going to be the point B, I am going to be considering the 0. At MC, there is a W into X magnitude is there. So maybe I am assuming and this is going to be the point C, right? This is going to be W, X is going to be the magnitude. And similarly, at A, we do have W into L. So, I am going to be considering here. So that is going to be W into L. There we can see the points are coming over here like this. So that I am going to be joining with the a straight inclined line. So this is going to be your point C. Can you see here? So this is the point A, C and the B and this is going to be the magnitude. Can you see the order of the curve for the shear force as well as the bending moment? Can you see whenever the point load is acting and the throughout the, the section of the beam is subjected to the same kind of the shear force. But when it comes to the, the bending moment, right, there we can see at point B there is no bending moment, right. At the point C, we would have the magnitude is into W into X and similarly at A is equal to W into L. So there we can see we got the inclined line. If the shear force diagram is got it in terms of the horizontal line, we are going to be getting the inclined line. When the shear force is getting the inclined line, here we are going to be getting the curved line. That is maybe cubic or maybe the parabola curve we are going to be observed here. So we will see in the next video, uh, we will consider the one, one more problem that is numericals we are using and then we are trying to solve the uh, problem. So that the clarity will going to be comes to our mind. Thank you.